Popcorn Junkies. Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. We are here reviewing... The Menu. The Menu, directed by Mark Mylod. He's been involved <laughs> with series like uh, Shameless and uh, Succession. Succession, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Mylod, Mark Mylod. So this is the film starring Ray Fiennes, Nicholas Holt, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, Janet McTeer. He's one of my favourite actresses, Janet McTeer. Absolutely. John Leguizamo. He's um, suddenly in everything, have you noticed? Everything. Yeah, and he's got very, very strong opinions on the new Mario Brothers film. I'd say this is another film that sits alongside films like Triangle of Sadness, films where they sort of rip into the wealthy and the rich. Yeah, and also that one which I can't remember the name Flux of. Flux Gourmet. Flux Gourmet, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which... So, you know, it's this idea of this takedown of the extremely rich, the uber rich, the affluent and all that kind of stuff. And this is, the, the and, you know, it's a very simple premise, this, isn't it? It's an incredibly yeah. exclusive elite restaurant on a really sort of abandoned, isolated sort of luxury. It's not really a luxury island, isn't it? I mean, Well, the fact that it's on an island is a bit of a luxury. Yeah, but anyway, so it's on an island and, and all the people who are attending pay gazillions or hundreds yeah. of thousands in order to go. It's yeah. so exclusive. And of course, Ray Fiennes is the chef, head chef. And um, they've all got some connection, however vague, to him, to mm, the chef. Yes. That we learn about in the course. Well, for of example, Janet McTeer is a restaurant critic, so she's critic. She's been yeah. a critique of some of his restaurants in the yeah, past. Yeah. Um, I couldn't work out John Liguizimo. He didn't have a connection with him, though he pretended to. John Liguizimo plays. Um, uh, he plays. Down he, on his luck. Well, he plays. Yeah, sort of. I felt he was kind of channeling Johnny Depp. Or himself, I have to say. Well, yeah, but he was never as big as Johnny. You know, that sort of, he used to be a huge star yeah. and, and, and what have you. But Nicholas Holt, his connection, I didn't really, I didn't find that was clarified. So they do have a connection, but I don't really know what the, the connection was. He was just a huge gourmand. He loved food. Yeah. And you have to be invited. So I just think they're VIPs. Okay. They're VIPs going to a VIP restaurant. Yeah. Um, and it's clearly shown quite early on that Anya Taylor-Joy isn't quite the person she's supposed to be. No. Insofar as Nicholas Holt was supposed to bring someone else. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, how did you feel as this got going? Premise? What, what, what oh, the you... premise. Oh, no, I was very enthusiastic about the premise, although I did wonder what different thing they could do with it. I have to say, I was sort of slightly fearful of that. It was all set in a restaurant. There was no change of, of, of anything except Ralph Fiennes. And, um, but in terms of the premise, when you say you thought it was going to do something different to what? What, what are you sort of referring to when you... Well, not to be pretentious, but you know the old Bunuel films where he sticks them in and people start to actually eat each other. There was that other film that you and I saw separately where they brought in somebody to cook the meat and in the end she ended up chopping up meat. But there is a big sort of vogue at the moment and I suppose I thought it would veer off into cannibalism. Right. And um, there's but... absolutely based on nothing because nothing in the reviews had said that it would. But I thought, how can they keep us interested because the basic premise of it, and I thought that this is what it would be, and it was, is a sort of Agatha Christie premise of somebody, a load of people come together and one by one they're, they're mm. killed, aren't they? Mm. The murder mystery, basically. Mm. Didn't you think it paid allegiance to that? I'm trying to think, what did I think as I was going into it? I, my concerns were, I sometimes find Ray Fiennes a bit mannered, so I was worried about that. The concept, I was thinking, well, we've just had Triangle of Sadness, which sees lots of rich people on a yacht and they've all been humiliated because they're all swimming in their own shit and swimming in their own vomit and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, to be honest with you, Triangle of Sadness didn't do anything radically new for me in the sort of no. exploration of the uber rich and punishing them. So I, I suppose I was coming to this thinking, oh, okay, so this is, this is, and that's what I mean. It sort of feels like, the, it feels like this has been done quite a lot. It feels yes. like the uber rich have been taken down. Yeah. What I found quite quickly with this was, I was kind of, kind of pleasantly surprised because I thought, oh, okay, this is, this is quite classily done. I thought, mm. I, I liked the way it was shot. I liked the way it was edited. I liked... I thought the performances of all of our cast, because it had one of those aspects to it, that although they're not all big names, there's a lot of big actors in there. Yeah. And I thought, oh God, are we going to have too many faces, too many voices, are we going to be vying for the attention yeah. of too many guests? Yeah. And I thought as a collective, I thought it did a really good job of establishing and setting the scene. And Nicholas Holt is standout in the sense that he is he is talking, he's, he's he makes himself visible or whatever you mm. like an awful lot all the way through it doesn't mm. it i mean he always has something to say he's the mm. first one to say any anything about each dish yeah i mean and he's by far the most sort of excitable yeah. alongside and, excited, Danny, and yeah. excited and he's like a child and and anya taylor joy i thought played a, did a really good job of sort of looking at him and trying to kind of understand this guy's obsessive sort of he was so obsequious as well and sort of yeah. sycophantic about the food and the chef and yeah the, and you just felt like oh you lapdog but he was he was very good at it. And you tell a Joyce thing was it's just food. Yes. I mean, how excited can you get over food? Absolutely. And I thought, for me, the film got very interesting at the point that Ray Fiennes came out and said, I don't want you to eat 
Mm. I want you to taste. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's the difference between it. And I'm really curious to know whether this film will hit anything or resonate for, in any way for anyone who isn't into food. Good point. Because I'd seen the film before, Mark, and we all as a family went out for a really nice meal. And I kept thinking of this film because I'm not a foodie, as you know. No, you, and, you positively... Um, Feel, I, I mean, I sense that you're positively uncomfortable in restaurants. Well, well, no, no, it's not that so much as I know I'm not going to be able to do it full justice because I'm not the Nicholas Holt No, Hall no, character. no, but also you're not comfortable with the waiters, you're not comfortable with the kind of, the, the theatre. There's a lot of theatre theater, to yeah, restaurant and there's yeah. a lot of theatre to expensive restaurants and yeah. high-end restaurants and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I just thought that the, the meal that we had was a, a sort of, especially the meal that I had, was an example of something that looked beautiful but that tasted of nothing and was tiny right i mean that was what the film was about basically wasn't yeah, it because the film came alive to me sorry mm. and the bread course where there is no right, bread right i thought that was just brilliant yeah and well explain what, what was that about so we had the amuse bouche and we yeah. had the starter and the, which i can't remember what they and were these are, you've got to understand these are dishes like essence I've, I've filmed in these restaurants it's it's essence of froth Yes. And it's like they'll take bit, huge rocks from the island and plonk a scallop on top and then plant, replant the naturally occurring wildlife of the plant, of the island yeah. on the rock. Yeah. I mean, it's a great wheeze in a way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it about is. it. But, uh, and the, then they get to a dish where you begin to the, uh, the bread dish. Uh, we get to the bread dish and uh, in real life, when people go out, whether they're into food or not, they all can't wait for the bread course <laughs> because they're starving. And yeah. because um, the whole thing of, you know, uh, cooking these days is smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody's on the edge of their seat for the bread course. The bread. And the bread co course comes out and it, does it say no bread? Or well, it has it a say? note. That's right. He's saying, written a note saying, you know, you, I can't remember. It's sort no, of like some some sort of high. It was a dismissal of class. It was like yeah. you, you, you know, it, it was, bread is the is the is the. He goes to these great lengths. I mean, Ray Fiennes introduces every course yeah. on the menu, you know, yeah. and he goes to great lengths to say that wheat and bread is the mainstay of poor people's diets yes. and, and uh, cuisine, yeah. and that because these people are so uber uber rich, they don't need bread. Yeah, yeah. And essentially, so he serves a, a bread board with no yeah. bread yeah i think as well that one of the reasons that i like that scene so much is a that it seemed to me to come at a point in the film where suddenly and to use the agatha christie analogy again the murder mysteries that all the all the customers started to know something was really mm. wrong mm. i mean however sort of really really wrong yeah really really wrong really, really however bad. sort of <laughs> skillful you are at making it something look nothing you can't make nothing look something you can't mm. make nothing look well, he could make nothing look nothing. Look nothing I know what you mean. Nothing. So, I was getting real Willy Wonka vibes. Oh, well, yes, some. I, read I mean, that I really was. I was getting, I and I was thinking, especially with Nicholas Holt, because you have this he sense of however people engaged with Ray Fiennes within this film, or potentially however they'd engaged with him in the past, say with Janet McTeer's character being. Um, being the restaurant critic, critic uh, you felt that he was going to punish you accordingly or something was going to happen yeah, to you accordingly. True. And I thought it took some really bold narrative steps. So, for example, there was a moment where Ray Fiennes and his employees have this sense that Anya Taylor-Joy isn't right because she wasn't on the name she wasn't on the on the name list you know she wasn't on the what's it called the door guest list yeah uh, it wasn't her she was someone else and so in a sense this has really unsettled ray fines because yeah he's a meticulous control freak this is all designed to the finest detail of what he's going to do with these guests yeah. what he's going to do with the menu and she throws a total kind of cat amongst she the pigeons does. And, to, and to say and this isn't giving anything away because it's in the trailer i think is that ralph fines takes her off at one point and says are you with them or with us and yeah. she says who's them and us yeah I and, mean, and he says you're not meant to be here no and it's clearly set at a really early point and i think it even says this in the trailer that people are going to die yes which i thought was quite when i heard that moment i was thinking hang on have you just neutered the kind of dramatic drive of this and then i thought then i began to think hang on this film is working in a much different what did you think of the hang on in this restaurant you've got ray fines yeah who i have to say i thought was fantastic yeah. Did, I did. Well, did you? No, 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 I did. It's no, just that ever since the Leonard Rossiter. No, no, I'm not. But ever since the Leonard Rossiter, I sort of keep seeing ed edges of Leonard Rossiter. But no, he was good. I just didn't think what I had to say was very interesting. But yes, he, he was good. What did you make of his mother sat on a table near the kitchen, drunk out of her awful. head? I thought that was terrible. <laughs> and I'm sick of modern, that more and more films that I'm seeing these days refer to a mother that is either old and haggard or running around with a breast out looking terrible. What, like or, Barbarian? Like, yeah, like Barbarian in that film that I saw before. Um, 
Or, I mean, what was the point of that? That was just nasty, I thought. Was it? Oh, come on. Was it nasty? You thought it was funny. I thought it was hysterical. You, you, you might I have thought done it was very... I bet, I bet you not many mothers did. I mean, the thing you've got to understand, guys, this this comes from a team that does dark comedy. If you think of Succession and Shameless, they, you know, they err on the side of extremely dark social commentary. And, I, you know, this is, for me, this is a grisly, dark comedy. Um, and... I thought Ray Fiennes played it excellently. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And I thought that as the menu, as the menu kind of started to unfold and he delivered the dishes and all this kind of stuff, I thought he did an expert job of telling us that where this was essentially going to go for all of these people, but still keeping us invested and still caring yeah. and still yeah. sort of watching with that extent to the extent of what the hell is going to happen next because of course there's one particular moment where and i'm fascinated by the idea of the theater i've just used yes, it about the yes, theater yes, of restaurants yes, and the yes. theater of dining yes. and there is one particular scene where an incredibly arresting thing happens to one of his sous chefs steps out into the middle of the restaurant he encourages him to talk we see something happen and what happens looks so real yeah and yet the, the restaurant critic says oh this is theater yeah. This is all theatre. This is the theatre of the absurd. This yeah. is this is what he does. So, but didn't you feel that? Um, put it this way, just asking you a simple, straight question. Although we knew that people were going to die from early on in the film, it's so shocking. Yeah, it's so shocking. It's been set up. Yeah. we've been coached into it. Mm. It fits in with the premise of the thing. But I literally jumped out of my skin. Mm. I don't know why. I thought he was going to do a swerve ball or something, or, mm. or take us somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I thought that was genuinely. I thought shocking. I thought that was excellent. I thought the what happened to Nicholas Holt was incredibly thought provoking and in tra incredibly tragic in terms Did of him you? forcing him to cook, and then suicide appears in this film. Uh, and then I thought the the moment with the the husband of the older wife. I thought I thought the older wife of the older guy who we discover what Anya Taylor Joy is. Yeah, we discover that yeah. she works in the service industry, yeah, yeah. and we discover that she is essentially one of the not she isn't literally, but she's at the same social strata level yeah. as Ray Fiennes considers his sort of staff to be in yeah. a sense. But we discover that one of the other guests, an older man, has had something to do with Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, we do. He gets his wedding finger cut off. Yes. Um, There's lots of fingers being lots cut of off, fingers being cut off. Um, there, there are moments which are also in the trailer where he sort of gives all the men an opportunity to escape the island. Yeah. And what this, what you realise this becomes is this is really a psychopathic, unleashed lunatic in the form of Ray Fiennes yeah. getting revenge yeah. on the uber rich, the hedge funder who who owned his restaurant, yeah, yeah. the you know the dodgy dealing kind of finance boys on the table, the out of work egotistical actor trading on his sort of vainglorious kind of yeah, past. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Holt, who's this sort of, you know, I think this sort of, sort of weak kind of weedy sort of idolatry sort of character. Yes, but he, but to give him his due, I mean, I thought he was stand out, Nicholas Holt. No, he was good, but his in, character was just no, yeah, but in repulsive. the sense that it was, but in the sense that he so inhabited it, yeah, that yeah, I yeah. really sort of felt that he did adore every single thing yes. that he was being presented. With. To the point that he was led off to his to his demise. To his doom. And then the, the the one part of the film that I didn't entire wasn't entirely convinced by was Annie Taylor Joy's attempt to escape in the yeah. first instance. Then she calls her, but I had the second shock moment yes was when rescue happens or yes. does rescue happen that that was that was fantastic that uh, exactly the same as you that was my second jump out yeah. of my skin jump out of you it was a real and that, so now that that to me sorry to interrupt but i thought that was better done than almost anything else in the film i don't i don't know how i can say that so much. this film literally it was like a tasting menu mm. that as you moved through the tasting menu mm. for me i'm not saying it got it got richer and richer yeah. and richer and I thought there were so many moments where, curiously, I thought it's going to kill the drama here. That's going to kill yeah, the drama. Here. Yeah. And it didn't get killed time and time yeah. again. To the point that I think that this actually, for me, is an incredibly, incredibly nuanced, incredibly layered, incredibly sophisticated treaty on food, dining and restauranteering. This and the is... Classes. Nadia is going to absolutely love this film because this yeah, is about how we don't taste, how we just eat and we just consume. This is about how the service industries are just taken for granted, are just used and are just abused and are just used for these people. That wonderful scene where he said to the old couple, the one who's had his finger chopped off, you've come here more times than anyone else. Yeah. Name me one of the dishes. Yeah. And she says cod. And he says with actual, absolute vitriol, it was fucking halibut, rare halibut. Yeah, yeah. I thought this was so clever. This for me, was an, a much subtler version of what the platform set out to do. Oh, okay. Which yeah, was, which was look at the social strata 
and use food as a vehicle to kind of access exploit and not political exploitation or anything like that but 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 within it you can't for a minute say that ray finds his character as empathetic or sympathetic no. he's like most head chefs and i've yeah. worked with many yeah. in restaurants nut, nut he's cases. a nutcase and success and constraint and restriction and serving people and that lovely moment which nadia always says that the most important ingredient in food is love the look of horror and upset and distress and this is where ray finds i thought played it so brilliantly mm -hmm. his distress his distress when told there wasn't love in his food yeah. his distress at the idea that what he was serving wasn't loved by the people who yeah. came. they came yeah. for status yeah and for me the third absolutely trumpingly brilliant ecstatic i was roaring with third laughter what? part of the film that yeah. absolutely floored me yeah was the entire exchange between anya taylor joy and him and the cheeseburger this goes to the very very heart of food what is food? What is going to a restaurant? What is it about? And I thought Ray Fiennes played that scene so beautifully. Yeah. He was so thrilled. He had, it was the only moment he was cooking for someone because they want, they'd asked him what they wanted. And what they wanted was what took them back to their own youth and their own childhood. Yeah. And he took them, and it wasn't done in a sop, it wasn't done in a sort of soppy way. No. It was witty. It was dark. It was moving. I, I mean, I was roaring with laughter and I just literally wanted to almost jump up and say encore. I thought, what a fantastic, dramatic scene of cooking a, che a 9 dollars cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah. After all of this ornate complexity yeah. that's gone before it. The thing is... And I think unless you're into food, you wouldn't get it. No, no, of course I got that. But also there are quite a few films around at the moment where they're saying that exact thing with the exact same example of a cheeseburger versus right. all these... these you know, amazing. Well, such as food. what Flux Gourmet and um, Triangle of Sadness. Yeah, but I think this does it better. I don't. I thought Triangle of Sadness did it better because it was so quick. It was Woody House and not even mentioned. I'm going to say something else. Yeah. I think lots and lots of film snobs want Triangle of Sadness to be the absolute. Oh, Triangle I know. of Sadness is a clumsy, clumsy, uh, plodding, overlong. Uh, it's sort of, it's, it's obese in itself, aggrandizement. Whereas this, I thought, was a sharp, stylistic clinical, sophisticated, thought-provoking, layered, clever, ensemble performed in a sense. I thought if Janet McTeer was sensational. Janet McTeer was good. She John wasn't was sens They were given just enough because you wanted more. Right down to the, the s'mores scene at the end. I mean, I thought, you know, it. I thought this, you know, the, my judgment sometimes is on, I'm sat in the cinema and what kind of enjoyment factor am I having here? This stimulated me in every way that Triangle, Triangle of Sadness was trying to and didn't succeed. I thought this showed infinitely more sophistication and class in terms of the structuring of the story, huge number of strong performances, whereas in Triangle of Sadness, they were just, I mean, I don't want to just do a, a straight quid quo pro kind of but contrast. Are, well, no, doing. but I just think that everyone is running to Triangle of Sadness because it's by the guy, it's won the palm draw and all this. This is an incredibly efficient, incredibly proficient thriller slash horror that I think is really thought provoking and really clever. Okay, I don't agree at all. I think I, I agree with a bit of that. I think the performances were good. I think if you're not interested in food, and I would say I'm not, um, it doesn't. All all the connecting bits where where we had the sort of philosophy of food, if you like, left me utterly cold. And they were also the bits where I thought he was least convincing. Ralph Fiennes. I just thought it was empty. It rattled about. Um, I thought the third, the, the shock that we get at the beginning of, if you like, in theatre terms, the third act was yeah. amazing because by then, usually people it, sitting in the cinema or in a theatre are pretty much thinking they've had all the shocks. Mm -hmm. That was brilliant. That mm -hmm. was absolutely brilliant. But that by far, I thought, was the, was the, was the standout moment. Mm -hmm. um, I like the John Leguizamo character Take because it wasn't until halfway through that we discovered that he sort of owned up to not being knowing everybody and not being the most famous person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that. I thought yeah. we got a humanity. I, but I thought, I thought the individual narratives on every single table were really well drawn. And I, I love the fact that we were left wanting more. I mean, it's like any good menu you want, or any good dish, you want to be left wanting more. You don't want to feel stuffed on it. And I thought, I thought it was a very clever film for that. And I thought, the whole Ray Fiennes and, you know, those photographs of him in his yeah, office as he yeah. was a younger chef. Yeah. I thought it was also a really interesting portrait of the psychopathy <laughs> of, of, of a head chef because when you've witnessed it and experienced it, and yet at the same time, his psychopathy has come from a place of passion, commitment, uh, you know, his craft and all that kind of stuff. And what he's discovered, this, this is the explosive moment, like, unfortunately, a sort of school shooting or something like that, where a head chef has had enough of his customers. 
He can't bear doing what he does and he can't bear what doing what he does represents in the world, which yeah. is nothing to do with what it meant to make a cheeseburger that resonated for a call girl because it took her back to her childhood. It kind I of thought went... it was an awfully long-winded approach to saying that, basically. No, I didn't. I thought, it was, I thought it was playful. I thought it was it was entertaining. I thought it was... I thought it titillated in all the right ways. I thought the violence was good. I thought it was clever. I thought. What it... did you think of his second in chief? His because she was quite important. She, well, she was identical it. to Michelle Rue's second in chief. I mean, she was very well cast. That's was exactly she? what she's like. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of liked. I mean, there was an element in it also of that. You know, was it the Nicole Kidman series that we were watching? Yeah. Like Nine yeah, yeah. Perfect Strangers yeah, or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it falls foul of its structure being too similar to so many other things. But what I was, I suppose, what, would, what am I saying? Don't be put off by the idea that this is just yet another film about it. You might prefer Triangle Sadness, you might prefer Flux Gourmet, you might prefer Nine Perfect Strangers. But this is, an, I personally found this an incredibly surprising and I was surprised by how, how much I enjoyed it. I came out thinking, I really enjoyed that. That was yeah. two hours of really good filmmaking. In a way, I know exactly what you're saying because there was a level where I enjoyed it, skating over the top of it. How can you not enjoy good performances um, Grand Gunnell, as they yeah. say, and um, and two huge surprises at the beginning and nearly nearly at the but end. But I think it's safe. Sounds... Hold on, hold on. But in terms of giving me something, not to just think, oh, that was that was fairly enjoyable, but to go out of the cinema and think about afterwards, which Triangle of Sadness did for all its things that were wrong with it, and I think there was lots wrong with it. It made me think afterwards, whereas this didn't. Well, this did. You see, isn't that funny how different films can do that? Triangle Sadness kind of suggested it. I was going to think about it, but I kind of stopped thinking about everything after I left the cinema. For me, it, it wasn't really bad. It was just no, a really, sure. really disappointing. It just didn't didn't snag me intellectually, and I was. I think what I was really surprised by was how. Having done, having made programs about yeah, that must the nostalgia of food, the importance of food to personality, yes, growth, life, food. history, uh, not just culture, but you know who you are and what you are. I think this film very cleverly it could have been made for you. The nostalgia very cleverly of food. talks about all of that, and you know, and I just, I just thought it was sensationally. I thought it was just brilliant. It was everything I don't get from those Agatha Christie films. Insofar yeah. as there wasn't a who done it, everyone you cared about, everyone you were like, oh, what's going to happen to them? Oh, what's going to happen to them? I don't. I just, I just found it thoroughly entertaining. I was so surprised. I, was, oh, okay. I went in expecting to not like it at all. Okay. I'd give it ninety-five. I'd give it forty. 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 Mm. Yeah. Bloody hell. Well, there you go. There's a contrasting set of scores. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.